Welcome back to Bridges. We are talking, as you know, if you were with us uh, the first segment, with Louis Escobar and Pastor Lee Williams about the reaction to President Obama's statement that he now supports gay marriage. I, you know, one of the things that um, continues to come up, and I, I think in this very complicated, very, very complicated discussion, is that this really is a civil rights issue more than its religious implications. It's a civil rights issue. You know, we've, we, the, the argument is out there that we are allowing segments of our society to be treated differently, again, simply because of their biology. So would you agree or would you disagree? I think it's a civil rights issue, but I, I, I think one of the things, like conversation that Lewis and I can have is, are, is really essential, that we talk to one another rather than at one another. One of the things that probably caused a bit of upset in our community, in the African American community, when you tied those to the civil rights struggle that we had for public accommodations, we think that that, yes, I believe that it's a civil rights struggle, but another civil rights struggle, such as the, the civil rights struggles that those that are, uh, that have different uh, physical and mental handicaps would have. So yes, it is another civil rights struggle. I mean, but you, you can't really bifurcate the issue of civil rights. It's not like there are some civil rights that, that are more important than other civil rights. Well, I mean, I'm not it, saying one's more it, important than the other, but there, it's, it's, it is civil rights, but another civil rights. Well, if, if you look at our history, you know, the, one of the things, when I first went to the first March on Washington, uh, that they had gay uh, March on Washington, uh, I remember being there and going like, why are we doing this? I says, I was born an American. I was born and raised an American. When did it say in the Constitution of the Bill of Rights that anyone who is female, anyone who is a person of color, or anyone who's gay, lesbian, transgender, and that you have lost your rights to A, B, C, and D? And that's exactly yet, my point. Yeah, but yet women had to, to, to fight for the vote, right? I mean, they had to, they had to demonstrate and they had to have the, a, uh, an amendment Absolutely. passed for that. Absolutely. Uh, uh, African Americans and, and Latinos had to fight uh, so that they can use bathrooms and they could have housing and, and all and that. And what should we have learned from that, though, Lois? We should have learned from that, that it's, it's, it's ridiculous to start to say that if we really are a country of, of, of democracy and we really believe in this Constitution and our civil rights, that it's ridiculous to have segments of our society have to fight. I mean, exactly. how many lives were lost um, in, in black America in the struggle for civil rights, you know? I, More than we can count. That's right, and, and we are certainly not, not the only ethnicities who's, who've had to battle for their civil but, rights. But I but think one of the points that, that within our communities, uh, women and people of color and gay and lesbian, I have actually seen people who, who college educated and all that stand up and say to a lesbian, you have no idea of what the struggle of civil rights is for unless you've been an African American man. Right. I mean, that's ludicrous. Right. I mean, and I they're, they're, they're different. I mean, uh, definitely, but there's still struggles and they're still painful and they hurt people. Now that, you know? That, that, that's the word that, that really brings us all together struggle and suffering. Now, there, there's, there's no, we don't need to bifurcate that because we all know and we've all had personal and it's been imposed upon us by someone who they, believed that they were in a powerful position that they could and it was okay and it's never been okay. But then you would think that, that those communities that were affected most in that way would be most generous to this particular issue. Yet what you're finding in pulpits across the country is a, an awful lot of disdain for the president's position, although there's, there aren't many pastors saying don't support the president. They're simply saying we don't agree yeah. Many, with this issue, many, we don't support him on this many issue. Many African American pastors, uh, not me in particular, feel they were jilted that there should have been a, a conversation with someone uh, who was an African American pastor. He, he in fact had those conversations, though, Lee. He he well, talked to he, he talked he to he talked to his spiritual consultants on this issue. Um, in, in an effort to determine the best way to roll this issue out. And actually, and you, you talked about the political implications of it in, in our first segment, I think those discussions were also had in a way for him to best determine how to damp down some of the, 
the controversy that he thought would happen in the religious and the gay communities. I mean, he, he couldn't really take for granted that the gay community was going to support him mm -hmm. in total on this. It's not a monolithic community. Well, you know, uh, uh, within the uh, religious community, I mean, the gay community is, as far as I know, and especially myself, I'm not saying that all the various religions have to acknowledge those marriages or they have to perform them. We have a very much respect for the, for the rights of the religious community. And, and they should, I mean, they, they will decide uh, which marriages that they will celebrate based upon their dogma and their teaching. And, sure. and no one is, a, is, is asking that to be changed. What we're asking for is the civil side of the, of the whole discussion, that, that civilly that we be allowed to be married and have the same benefits. You know, my companion and I have been together this year 24 years. Next year will be 25 years together. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have a big celebration for that, for family and friends. Mm -hmm. uh, yet, uh, someone asked me, well, what, are you going to renew your vows? I says, we've never taken vows. Never taken vows. I says, okay. but what we did, I says, for my companion, one of the biggest things that kind of cemented our relationship was when we opened a joint checking account. You know, because that was a real tangible thing for us. But some other couples have had the benefit of vows in marriage because of the states that they live in, you know. But to me, uh, the, what, what I think people are beginning to see is that we're coming out from behind the, the closed door and they're seeing us in neighborhoods, they're seeing us with kids, uh, they're seeing us being a regular part of the community. And, and then how do you then still refuse those people? You know, the rights. The same thing with blacks. I mean, how long? I mean, I just, I can't imagine. How long? What, Not long, huh? You know, how, yeah. you know <laughs> what blacks had to go through and still struggle to to this day. So, so do you think this changes anything? Do you think his support of this really changes anything, Lee? I, I think the struggle continues. When I say jilted, I said people felt that way. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he talked to spiritual advisors or someone. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was something that all of us needed to have a conversation, perhaps a conversation that Lewis and I can have mm -hmm. and have mutual respect. He was once uh, uh, in, in a position in a, in, a, in a hospital where I would have had to provide for him the same kind of care that I would have to provide for any patient. And I would have no difficulty dealing with that. I would give him the best that I had. But, but everybody has to evolve to a point where your personal biases or personal prejudice, you know, can't get in the way of how you service and, and you, you provide compassion to your fellow man. So, so this, is, this is a journey. It's a journey, yes. It's a journey. And, and we are still on the road to that journey. Uh, it, it's not ended because of what the president said or did not say. That's a good point. That's a really good point. And you, you think that eventually this will become commonplace in, in the black community and accepted in the black community? Forget the commonplace comment, but do you think it'll be accepted? I think the, the African community, African American community is, the, is one of the most compassionate communities that there is. I would agree with that. Because of our suffering and for those that we've had to look out for. Uh, I think that there's a lot that can be learned when people sit down and talk and, talk and have to each other. mutual respect, but the conversation is not going on and it needs to go on, particularly that's, in a city like a really Toledo. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, conversation needs to go on. Look. You know, I look, I look at our president, uh, and I was first supporting Hillary, you know, in the, the last presidential election because I did not believe that our community, our, our country was ready for an African American president. And I was at the convention when he spoke. And, and my God, it was so moving, that convention, and to hear this man speak with his wife and his two little daughters up there. And then I rode on the train on the way back, going to the hotels, filled with all these Caucasians, and they were all talking about he was going to be a president of this country, you know, and they called him another Kennedy. And, and, th and I had these chills. And then at the same time, I says, what planet are you people living on? They're not going to elect a man like this yet. Yeah. And he got elected. And he got elected. And <laughs> but I, then what has happened, though, is that there are those who still disrespect him. No president would have been 
Absolutely. before him have been called a, a liar. liar. Absolutely. And no worse. president and, no and, president would have been in, uninvited in to uh to to the to the House and the Senate uh, for the, I mean there Absolutely. are things that this man has endured and he has endured them with the utmost respect and dignity. And grace. Yes. And grace. You know what? Um, I want to talk to you at another time about about your comment that the the uh, union isn't wasn't ready for a black president, but before that you have, off the subject just a little, and we have just a little bit of time, you are really feeling a little uncomfortable with this whole movement to name, um, to make a, as a gay icon in this community, Mr. Wicks. Do you want to yes. talk about that briefly? Yeah, very quickly. quickly. I, I, you know, I reviewed the, the Blade articles, and they made it more like a, a business people were opposed to him and all that, and the, and the one who, who wanted, wanted it to, to go forward was calling him an icon and all that. I've talked to, since I heard about this, no I have yet to, I have found not a single gay person yet who thinks that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to have you back and talk about that in more detail because it's really a provocative story from your position. We gotta go, we just never have enough time. We gotta go away for just a second, but I promise we'll be right back.